Hey, sixth grade, this is lesson 5.1. Understand the concept and language of ratios. We're going to write ratios in three different ways, given a diagram or a description. All right, so the spark you're learning says, Jace and Kiko each care for several birdhouses. Jace thinks his birdhouses are more popular than Kiko. More popular, but Kiko disagrees. They decide to test their conjectures. They both count the number of birds that visit their birdhouses one afternoon. Jace counts 12 birds that visit his five birdhouses, while 15 birds visit Kiko's birdhouses. Whose birdhouses are more popular? I want you to pause and I want you to see what you can figure out. You have a whole big open space there. Do some exploring and see if you can decide whose birdhouses are more popular and then hit play. All right, so let's see what you decided. Here's what I would do. Um, first, I have Jace. And he said that 12 birds visited his five houses. Then, if I did 12 over 5, that would reduce to, let's see... 5 goes into 12, 2 times with 2 fifths left over. So that is 2 and 2 fifths birds per house. I know you can't have a part of a bird, but in this case we're just comparing. Um, and then Kiku, it said had 15 birds for six houses. So if we were to reduce that, let's see, six goes into 15 two times, which gives them three left over. And we can reduce that to two and a half birds. We can reduce that to two and a half birds per house. So once we make them the same, so it's really hard to um, compare five-fifths to sixths, but now we kind of can visualize these. We have two-fifths and one-half. Is two-fifths one-half? No, two-fifths is a little bit smaller than a half. So we know that this one is bigger, which means that Kiku... Birdhouse are more popular. And that is, those are ratios. Um, fractions, um, I know we've used fractions a lot and I keep telling you fractions are division problems. Well, now fractions are also comparisons or ratios. All right? All right, let's look at the next page. This page says... Tyree's cat had a litter of black and orange kittens. The tape diagram shows the number of each color kitten in the litter, with each section representing one kitten. What are the different ways that Tyree can compare the numbers of kittens? Okay, so then A says, how many orange kittens are there and how many black kittens? So if we were to look at the tape diagram, how many orange kittens do you think there are? Correct. So let me zoom in here. We are two orange. And how many black? Correct, four black. Now, I purposely wrote it like this because it says write a comparison between the two numbers. Uh, and I wanted the extra space. Uh, beginning with four each. So, um, we could say four each orange kitten. There are how many black ones? So if I wanted to reduce this, see how I wrote it as a fraction? <laughs> Thinking ahead there. Um, and I wanted to say for each kit, orange kitten, so for one orange kitten, how many black? Could I just reduce that? I could, so we could divide by two and that becomes two. So there are two black. So even though I thought of my comparison here as a fraction, 
it's really two separate numbers. So when I break it up into what it really means, it's not one half, it's one black kitten. No, it's one orange kitten for two black kittens, okay? And you could also look at the tape diagram that two of these could match up with one of these, and then two of these can match up with one of these, okay? How does the number of ki orange kittens compare to the total number of kittens in the litter? Write a comparison beginning for every. So we could say for every two orange kittens, there are how many total? To find that, well, we know we have two orange and four black, so total means to add, so that gives us six. So this time, our comparison was orange to total. How does the number of black kittens compare to the total number of kittens in the litter? So same thing, but instead of orange, we want black this time. So we would say for every four black, there are six total. All right, suppose each section of the tape diagram represents two cats rather than one kitten. Will that change the comparisons why or why not? For part A, so let's go back up here and look. So now for part A, so remember now these are each twos. It wants us to say for each orange kitten, there are how many black kittens? Well, if I had four orange kittens now and two, four, six, eight black kittens, will I still have one orange kitten for every two black? Are these all equivalent? Yeah. So we will say down here that no, it does not change. because there are still two black kittens for every orange kitten. All right, let's look at ratio B. This time it says uh, for every two orange kittens, there are how many total? So that was two to six. Well, now we have four total orange kittens, and all together we have 12. Are those equal? You betcha. So it didn't change it there either. So no, there are still two orange kittens. To six total kittens. All right, let's look at the next page. A ratio can be written several ways. Okay, so we're talking about ratios. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities by division. So all of those, those things we were comparing with the kittens, those were ratios. You can write ratios three ways. You can use the word two, you can use two dots, which is a colon, or you can write it as a fraction. I like to write it as a fraction, that's my favorite way, but you just have to look at the question and see what it says. Okay, then we can write a ratio that's part to part. That would be like orange kittens to black kittens, or part to whole, which was orange kittens to total kittens. Or you could flip it around and do whole to part the total kittens to the black kittens, okay? Um, so whenever it says whole, sometimes we might refer to that as total as, as well, all right? So let's look at this next example. It says, Erin is making a quilt for a craft fair. The quilt is made with four different fabric colors as shown in the picture. Complete the tape diagram to model the ratio of the number of blue squares to the number of white squares. 
how many blue squares do we have? We have three, so let's color in three blue squares. How many white squares? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. And there's five white left. So there's our type, tape, di tape diagram. Three blue to five white. Complete the statements to describe the ratio of blue squares to white squares. Now, this is super important. We must always read it carefully. It says to compare blue to white. So we have to write it in that order. So we had three blue and five white. Three blue, five white. Three blue, five white. See how I kept the same order because it says blue to white. All right, for every three blue, there are five white. Those are all the different ways we could write the same ratio or draw it like we did in A. All right, C says write a part to whole or whole to part comparison about the quilt. Using symbols and using language such as for each, for every, or per. So how many blue squares were there? Three blue squares. And then it says part to whole. So blue was our part. And then we need to figure out our whole. So we had three blue. How many squares do we have all together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So three to 15. But then it also wanted us to use ratio language. So we could say there are three blue to 15 total squares. Okay. For every small green square, there are two large green squares. Does this mean one out of every two green squares is small? Why or why not? Okay, so let's think about this. Yes, there's one small and two large. Okay, so that is one small to two large. But then it says, does that mean that one out of every two? One out of every two means one small out of two total. How many total green squares are there? Three. So really, it's not one small to two total. It's one small to three total. So we're going to say no because there are three total squares. Um, so one out of three are green. All right. Okay, now I want you to pause the video and I want you to do the check your understanding and then come back and, and check your work when you're done. All right, good job. So it says, describe the ratio when ratio language and with symbols, the relationship between the number of tails and the number of legs on a dog. So how many tails are on a dog? One. How many legs are usually on a dog? Four. So we could say um, something like four every one tail, there are four legs. Or you could say there are four legs to every one tail. Okay, Does it, it, there's many ways we could write it, but it needs to be one and four, okay? Um, a recipe that makes eight cups of limeade uses two cups of lime juice. Describe the related ratio two to eight using ratio language. Does the ratio involve only parts or does it involve parts and a whole? Eight cups of limeade to two cups of lime juice. So limeade is a drink that you make and something that you use is lime juice. Um, so two to eight means what? Yeah, it says for every two cups, 
of lime juice. The recipe makes eight cups of limeade. Now, is that part to part or part to whole? Right, it's part to whole because the limeade is the finished thing that we're wanting to make. So it's part to whole. The lime juice is part is a recipe as a, I'm sorry. The lime juice is an ingredient and the limeade is the outcome, the final recipe. All right, and that's today's lesson. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.